everybody. I was a little bit faster than I was expecting. I put it on loop. I apologize for being late today. Um, turns out uh, I need to have a discussion with my roommate. Nothing uh, problem. It's just like uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that we were on the same page on something before I uh, um, uh, before I came up here to stream because uh, she might be asleep by the time I get done. Um, so, and I didn't want to wait another day or so on that. Nothing, like I said, nothing big. Uh, so that, and I'm running a little bit slow today because unfortunately I seem to have a bit of vertigo. I'm assuming that's due to the weather. So I'm a little slow as I make sure I don't fall over on anything, but, uh, uh, welcome, welcome and welcome. It's good to see you all on here. So let's get on to uh, um, getting these braids set up. I will uh, try and make sure that I get my brain more fully in here. Okay. I also forgot to uh, um, take my put my knife back in my pocket when I was done with the stream Tuesday, and so I didn't have it at work Wednesday. I also managed to forget my uh, Fitbit, which was a bit annoying. Uh, I'm one of those people from an age where uh, you always had a watch on your wrist and still have it, even though I know a lot of people use smartphones these days to tell time. Uh, I'm just not used to that. So... I've had a... Uh, permanent lack of suntan on my uh, left wrist for probably over 40 years these by now. There we go. That's one. And I just need three more of these. Hope oh, things been going well for you folks. I noticed that uh, my last uh, stream for setting this up has been very popular. Thank you very much. So, there we go. And yes, I'm being very careful to only cut away from me. Tomorrow is going to be a fun day. Uh, I get to head out of the house about two hours later than normal, so I should be able to get a, a little more of a night's sleep than I have been. Um, there we go. And then I get to go to the uh, auto shop and get my brakes worked on. Since I'm going to be driving uh, in about a month uh, across the state, I definitely don't want to have a problem with my brakes or with the car in general. Been there, done that, have no desire to do it again, but I keep up a uh, AAA membership just to be on the safe side. Back, uh, not quite 30 years ago, uh, after I'd uh, started playing the harp, I'd uh, moved back to Idaho from California, and there was a, a big SCA event, uh, 30th year celebration, if I remember right, uh, which was held in um, just outside Portland, or not Portland, um, Vancouver, Washington, I think. Um, anyway, it was right on the uh, Oregon-Washington border near the coast. And I had uh, a Dodge Colt at the time, which is a fairly small compact car. And uh, was on my way out. It was the middle of the night. And suddenly I couldn't shift anymore. And I was about 70 miles away from a very tiny town called... Um, the Dolls, uh, at least that's the way the people were pronouncing it, Oregon, which is spelled the Dallas. So I think a few people called it the Dolls. Um, so I was able to uh, get a trucker to uh, pull over and give me a lift there to where I could actually like, you know, get on a phone and call a tow company and whatnot. But uh, 
I had to take my harp with me. But yeah. And then once I got the car towed, I had to wait till like morning rolled around and they were able to come into the shop. And I think I got out of there sometime that day to where I could get to the event site before that night and get my tent set up. So it was frustrating, moderately expensive, but uh, no harm, no foul. Hey, Marmar, nice to see you on. Thank you very much for uh, posting links to the live stream. I really appreciate that. I am trying to uh, improve my uh, shameless self-promotion, but I got a lot of mental inertia to overcome with that. There we go. And that's the next badge there. And toss that out of the way where I can put it away later. And uh, let's see. So I'm thinking possibly of doing a Friday night live stream. Actually, let me pause for a second here. There's something I was thinking about. Yep. Grab the tape measure here. All right. So... Just to confirm, roughly uh, the size circumference here. Okay. All right, so we're looking about three and three quarters inch circumference. So, Doing it, I found out how fast my, uh, um, or how slow I can get my uh, drill press to go to. Um, let's see, let me bring up the calculator. Um, so, let's see, uh, nine feet is... by uh, 108 inches, let's see, divided by 3.75 inches circumference gives us roughly 29 uh, rotations for a Tama. And um, 29 rotations times uh, 40, well, roughly 42. One color will run 41 Tom, and the other one will run 43. Um, so that is 1,218 uh, rotations uh, of this um, spool here to get enough thread uh, to warp up all of uh, Rob's braid uh, for a single, or yeah, for all the time I need for a single braid. Or I'll have to do 12 of these and the 12 of them, they'll have enough to, to warp up all the time of that color. So uh, divided by, Two hundred and twenty RPM gives me five and a half minutes to um, wind thread on the spool, which seems perfectly reasonable. It probably want to do a. I mean, I could do it a little faster, but I think that's a little more reasonable and more likely to get me an accurate measurement. So, if I set it for like six minutes, that should definitely be enough. Um, so, I have a project this weekend to uh, warp up all these spools. And then I will be ready to start warping up the Tama for Rob's braid. So anyway, that's that's my uh, plan for getting his uh, start on his braid this weekend. Yep, definitely. I'm working on it, though. And yes, she is.
and hello to you too. Okay, so I'm going to put on a little bit of background music. Hopefully it's not annoying. Uh, if it is, please let me know and I'll stop that. But give me a second here, I'll turn that on. Let's uh, make sure it's not too loud. Let's see how bad night driving is. It's not too bad. Okay, so we shall get started again. We have 12, wait a minute, let's see. Yeah, we have uh, 12 Tama to wind and set up and we'll be ready to start the braid. So I should definitely be able to do that. And as I mentioned, I get to uh, sleep in a couple of hours extra tomorrow morning. So I will uh, definitely get started on the braid before I finish the live stream. I have a few other things I need to do before the day ends, but they shouldn't take too long. Basically got to make up some letters to send out that uh, I'll mail out in the morning. Okay. All right, if I remember right, I was doing my side left, my side right, then far side left, far side right. So, anything interesting happening to you folks in chat? I do have to also say thank you to the replay crew. Uh, I have been getting a lot of views on the last uh, stream relative to what I normally get. So, Thank you folks for watching when you get a chance to and for the replay crew for this one as well uh thank you thank you thank you i'm uh doing pretty good looks like i might actually get about uh 300 watch hours for this month if i can keep that up for roughly a year that will definitely get me to monetization though i hope that'll happen faster speaking of youtube shenanigans it's been kind of funny i hit 811, then drop down to 810, then 89, then back up to 810, then back up to 811, then down to 810 again. Currently I'm at 811. Figure eventually YouTube will uh, start showing me to people again and that'll improve. Okay. Uh, about there. And tie the lark's head knot again. Once that's done, it holds it. We're doing really well for attendance today. Thank you very much. Um, I was able to get the uh, fireplace uh, oil barrel conversion uh, out to the curb. I don't know if it wound up on recycle or somebody picked it up. It was still there when I left in the morning. It wasn't here when I got home. So, um, but since I really haven't used it for like most of the last decade, actually, I need to unwind this first before I put that in there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to miss it. And the mini split I'm putting in has heating capacity, probably better than that wood stove ever did. Uh, cause while it would heat up the corner, it would not really warm up the rest of the garage. And the mini split does have, uh, ventilation in, built into it, so that should help a lot. Um, so uh, now that that's gone, I have a place that I can set up and start putting the uh, mini split in. And I've got everything I need that I'm aware of to put it together, though I might have to get a uh, mounting rack for the uh, compressor on the outside. but. That can wait a little bit uh, if necessary. Um, the uh, I've seen a bunch of compatible models on Amazon, but I think it came with one. I will just have to unpack everything and make the decision then. I figure it's probably gonna take me like three or four days to actually get it all put together. So if I have to wait a day or two for that to arrive, it shouldn't be a big problem. 
And then once that's in place, I will have a shop refuge where I can stay cool during the summer and hopefully warm in the winter and be productive. But anyway, the reason I was thinking about that as far as uh, mentioning it again, because I know I mentioned it before, uh, I had to get a vacuum pump so that I can uh, get the lines uh, drawn down before I uh, and, and leak check before I put the refrigerant in or it's a pre-charged system. So it's more like charge the lines than uh, uh, put refrigerant into it in the first place. Uh, but I took a look at the specs on the vacuum pump and looked at uh, what vacuum tables for my CNC router would require. And it looks like the pump I have can handle up to about say a 12 inch wide by 24 inch long uh, vacuum table, which will make it a lot nicer to uh, route out signs and the like. Um, I use that type of, uh, yeah, I want that a little higher. Um, I use that uh, type of holding mechanism at work. Um, admittedly, I didn't come up with it. It's, it was pre-existing where I was working. Um, but it works really nice for holding stuff down without having to spend a lot of time to uh, come up with different hold down me methods to do it. So um, if I can get the right type of table, um, I can use some gasket material and just lay it out in a uh, pattern that'll fit slightly smaller area than the uh, surface of the part I'm working on. Put the part on, turn on the vacuum, make sure it's pressed down and the vacuum will hold it in place. When I'm done, release the vacuum and lift it off. No muss, no fuss. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Uh, this blue, let me take a look. Um, it is 820. Um, sorry to hear that, but I'm glad to hear that you're doing better and hopefully it will continue to get better. Uh, let me see if there's a uh, name for the color for 820. Let's see, quick Google search here. Okay, it says it's royal blue, very dark. Um, yeah, very dark royal blue floss. Okay, that's the name for it. Hope that's helpful. I don't really think of them with uh, names just kind of the numbered uh when i'm looking through these the uh, red i like to use most often is 321 and i'm amused that the other red that's i like a lot is 666 Fortunately, the, uh, the D-ring is a little large, but the smaller one, I think, would have been a bit too small for the type of flat braid that I'm going to be producing here. But it makes it much easier to uh, run the uh, floss through the D-ring to be able to tie them off than the smaller ring was for the last braid. So I'm very happy with that. And I do have to say that uh, I'm about three years into taking allergy shots. And this is supposed to have been a very bad allergy season where I'm at. And I have barely noticed it at all. So um, I am really, really pleased with how well it's worked for me. Go. 
apparently uh, Nick Riceda is having a locals uh, call-in show. I was able to get through on his last one. Had fun having a little bit of a chat with him, but I don't think I'm going to be up for staying up as late as it needs to be to be on his local stream. Plus, uh, my wife is no longer working the night shift, so she would be home and I would be waking her up doing that. And as much as she's been working this last week on a shift different than one she's used to, I figure that would be really, really rude. So I will not be doing that. But it is fun to talk to Nick. I did get a chance to meet him in person when he was in Philadelphia for his, uh, well, not his show. He was uh, a guest on uh, the Dick Show's uh, live event. I do know Nick's friends with him, but I find his uh, humor and uh, show to be very annoying. So I was there to see Nick and not really anybody else. It was also a very nice uh, show or nice uh, thing in that uh, Lady Rackets was very happy with uh, the braid I'd made for Nick and uh, I printed out a uh, 3D, um, or 3D printed out a skull hairpiece that she seemed to really like as well. So it's nice getting to meet her as well. Nick is a very lucky man. Yeah. Um, Wet weather tends to uh, help aggravate allergies a lot uh, if it's pollen-based or mold-based. Um, the uh, About a year ago, they retested me um, because it had been a couple years since I'd started. And I was switching practices because I'd switched jobs and the other practice was not one I could make it to uh, between you know, leaving from work uh, to get there in time. And uh, apparently uh, I was dealing with it well enough that my body decided it needed to be allergic to something else and picked up an allergy to outdoor molds that I did not have before. Um, though they're not bothering me this time around currently, so apparently their uh, treatment is working pretty well. Hey, Lauren, nice to see you on. No problem listening. Uh, stay safe at work. Uh, and hello to you, too. Now, admittedly, when I was growing up, it was in Idaho, where uh, it is not very humid. The annual precipitation is about 10 inches a year. And now I'm living in an area where the uh, precipitation tends to run five inches a month. So, big difference. All right. Another four tom to uh, defiber and refiber. Yeah, Georgia, USA is a lot more. Uh, uh, humid than the uh, Georgia in very far Eastern Europe, slightly far Western Asia. I'm not sure exactly where the breakover is on that. I know that uh, uh, it was Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are still Europe, and they were like on the Western edge of uh, the former Soviet Union. I'd have to look at a map to tell for certain. I wasn't always that great in geography, but I didn't have a too horrible idea where things are. Right. I know there are a lot of former republics that end in Stan that are not Afghanistan, though they are close to Afghanistan.
There we go. Getting a little faster. Also, uh, in my pursuit of uh, physical therapy and or weight loss, um, I went ahead and ordered a um, pull-up bar for the garage uh, since it has exposed rafters. I figure I can mount one on one of the rafters and work on doing pull-ups while I'm out there. I don't know if I can do a single pull-up now, but as I understand, uh, you just keep working at it and eventually you'll do one pull up and then keep doing it. Eventually do you, you'll do more than one. So I'm pretty good on leg strength, but I need to work on upper body strength. If I get too much into uh, old man physical problems, please let me know and I will switch this topic away from that. I am going to have to be careful in the uh, uh, garage so that uh, I don't, uh, if I have fall off or anything like that, I don't hit any like sharp metal equipment and injure myself seriously, because that would be bad. Alrighty. This green is green 700. So two and four. And I will check on the name for that in just a second for you wonderful folks. Okay. Okay, bright green is the name for this floss. And toss it over to be put away later. YouTube's streaming stats page back up. Gives me a little bit of an earlier uh, thing on the chats before StreamYard picks them up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll start out that way. Thank you. Uh, green is my wife's favorite color. She likes nice, bright primary greens, but she likes any of them. I'm not sure I'm up for that yet, but maybe eventually. Um, I've also unfortunately known some people who've set up the uh, pull-up bars on a uh, door frame for in the house and not always had that be a very successful experience for them. Oh, and in case I haven't said it, welcome to the stream. Uh, Joe Lloyd, it's nice to see you on. And Lady Draconis, a.k.a. Christina. A good friend of mine, uh, if I remember right, was in the Navy, and though uh, she retired um, quite a while back. Um, Speaking of which, uh, she was one of two people I knew that have had vasovagal reactions where they either, depending on how you look at it, they either died or appeared to die when they got an injection or when they got a needle stick. Uh, one of them, it happens uh, when they get it in their elbow, the other one when they get it on the back of their hand. But they've never run across anybody else who has had that happen to them. Um, um, so it was my chance to put them in contact with each other. Um, the other one was a uh, New York attorney uh, who I haven't actually met in person yet, mainly just online, but he's retired now. But when he was uh, practicing, he was the type of attorney who would um, uh, essentially help uh, broker and uh, establish large infrastructure projects around the world. Uh, things like building dams, uh, 
or uh, getting infrastructure in place to get like water and stuff like that in parts of the world where it had been pre-existing. So. I mean, while he made a good living at it, he was not like uh, one of the uh, mega rich type lawyers. He was just. Workman like. Okay. So let me uh, finish unwinding that because I'm getting a little out of order here. Um, and his comment was because he was in his cardiologist's office. Um, having a heart attack in your cardi cardiologist's office is not the best place to have it because in the room he was in, um, they couldn't get the crash cart through the door. So, but yeah, apparently there is a, uh, um, uh, the vagus nerve on some people, if you get, uh, like an injection, uh, in, in certain areas or whatnot, um, you either have a heart attack or have it look a lot like you're having a heart attack, though some, depending on the severity, sometimes you'll just, after it's removed or whatever, you'll pop back. Um, but yeah, both of them had very disconcerting experiences where they get what appears to be an inoculus, inoculus, innocuous, sorry, uh, needle stick and pass out and wake up with, uh, as I understand it, in both cases, somebody performing CPR on them extremely energetically. So, um, and uh, the lady uh, I knew who was in the Navy who had that um, did have uh, problems after that, where when she would have like uh, medical checkups and whatnot, they would want to, uh, you know, sticker for a blood draw. It's like, no, you are not doing that. Yes, I need to do that. You're required to do that. Nope. If you do that, I am going to have a heart attack in front of you. So I think she was usually able to get them to like read her file before they did that. But it was a very stressful time for her whenever she had to see a medical practitioner who had not actually read her whole file. So, anyway, interesting side note there. Supposedly, I'm going to eventually meet up with the lawyer for dinner sometime when he's on the East Coast. He's retired to Montana to be a ski bum and uh, coach baseball. But yeah, he coaches like uh, junior high and high school level uh, baseball as... Um, I don't suppose you'd say a hobby or avocation, but uh, uh, he, when he was living in New York, he had the opportunity to coach uh, baseball on his son's team. And he found it to be an extremely re rewarding experience. Um, and his son probably could have uh, um, made it into the... Uh, minors or maybe even the major leagues, but uh, decided that he wanted to get into medicine and wound up doing that instead. Um, has worked as an EMT and he's, uh, I think, currently getting into a math-related medical field, though I'm not currently sure what that is at the moment. I really should unwind these first, but I'm enjoying talking to you folks and getting distracted. Um, trying not to fall over. Falling out of a chair is embarrassing. But, um, okay. Oh, and I had an interesting realization today. Um, somebody was talking about uh, one of the Critical Drinkers uh, reviews. Um, and I realized that since I had a chance to meet Nick, that puts me 
two degrees of separation away from the critical drinker. So, but also having met Nick puts me two degrees away from a lot of people that I wasn't before. There we go, one more, and we should be good with this one. I can start rolling it up, there we go. Me too. I can actually uh, identify any original uh, series tar Star Trek episode within 15 minutes of seeing it, regardless of where it is in the episode. Nice to see you on, Kathleen. I am sorry that that happened to you. I hope that uh, you have completely rec recovered from that. But that does not sound like that was fun. Speaking of that, I remember finding out the hard way as I was growing up that I had gotten too tall to be able to fall down and catch myself with my hands and not be injured. Uh, I think I was like 11 or 12 at the time. I tripped, put out my hands, landed on some gravel and like really just kind of bludgeoned up my hands. And it's like, I was so, um, I guess you'd say offended by the fact that I was hurt because I'd done that before hundreds of times when I, uh, and had never, uh, you know, gotten scratched up or anything like that. And a little while after that, I realized, oh, I'd gotten tall enough that I would fall far enough and I weighed enough that I was just putting enough force on my hands to, it's no longer safe. After that, I tried to get a lot better about my coordination and avoid that from happening again. Yeah. I think it's finally faded after about 48 years or so. I had uh, an incident where a St. Bernard ran into the front tire of the bicycle I was riding at a relatively low speed, fell over and got like a nice big scrape on the back of the hand there. And when the uh, scab finally came off, I had a uh, fairly visible scar there, but it looks like it's completely or just about completely gone now. I can kind of barely see it. Good night, Christina. Thank you again for uh, stopping by and hopefully you have a uh, pleasant evening and we'll see you again later. minutes in and I'm actually about almost two-thirds of the way for the remainder of the winding or the setup that I need to do so I'm pretty happy with that let's see if I can't get this through another way because reaching down from top doesn't seem to be working too well that looks like that worked. Yep. And uh, so plan for this weekend is to hopefully get the spools uh, wound together for Rob's braid, get the signs glued together, for uh, the gaming tents that I'm supposed to do uh, and uh, get my car serviced. Going to get my uh, haircut before in the next week or two because my hair is curly and when it gets too long, it looks kind of weird and lanky. So since I'm going to be on vacation for three weeks, 
it'd be nice not having to worry about being extra careful on how I comb my hair after I get out of the shower. And I am going to see whether or not it's relatively inexpensive for me to, oops, I may have pulled a knot in there. Let's check this out. Whether it's relatively inexpensive enough, I can uh, buy a uh, vacuum table of the size I need without a pump attached to it. I can maybe find one secondhand on eBay, or if it's better if I make one myself. If I make one myself, do I make it out of uh, phenolic, PVC, something else, MDF? I think MDF uh, would be relatively inexpensive to do, but the pump I've got is kind of borderline for the type of work I'm thinking for it. Uh, you can improve the performance by like uh, using um, varnish or whatever to uh, seal the areas uh, where you don't want vacuum to act through. Um, the big routers at work I use, we have uh, uh, an MDF spoil board on them, which is used to... Uh, um, it covers the vacuum table and we can put uh, pieces to be machined on it and then use other pieces of plastic to mask off the other areas so that we don't lose too much vacuum and we get the whole down power on it we want. Um, I, can, I can also do a vacuum table out of like aluminum, but I don't really have the capacity to make that table at home. So... And I want to do the uh, type of table where I can uh, easily um, set the area that I want the vacuum to uh, hold on using gasket material. I also need to think about and draw up how I'm going to make the box for the uh, attendance counter that I 3D printed. Speaking of which, I got to reprint a part for that. I've been storing it in the uh, stairwell upstairs to keep it out of the way from my uh, wife wanting to clean the house. Uh, I didn't want to make more mess for her while she was doing that. And apparently, uh, when the door was opened, uh, sometime it fell out and kind of crushed the end on one of the pieces. Fortunately, I have the program saved on the 3D printer. And once I get the uh, right color filament back uh, delivered, uh, tomorrow, I can just reprint that and replace it with a good one. So, no harm, no foul. I also need to uh, uh, get all of the uh, parts of uh, Ian's braid streams together so I can do a combined time lapse for that. Get that posted. I think I got a couple of shorts I want to do. I'm not sure how well it'll fit with the algorithm for what I've done for other stuff, but uh, the other day my wife and I were walking to the local corner store and there was a little teeny cute bunny rabbit uh, in some landscaping that I got a little bit of video of. We're in a fairly well built up area for like suburban, but not uh, urban area. And uh, so we've got uh, like foxes in the neighborhood and uh, rabbits and things like that. Yep, MDF is relatively cheap. Uh, on the big routers at work, it's a disposable commodity. We uh, you know, run several different jobs and we, when they get cut out, the uh, cutout track is about 10 thousandths deeper than the bottom of the part, so it leaves grooves in the uh, MDF table. And then every so, so often we use a big flywheel cutter to face off the surface and smooth it out again so that uh, we don't have the tracks that make it uh, harder for stuff to be held down going forward. So that gets done like about probably once or twice a week, depending on how aggressive the uh, um, machining job was or if we made a mistake, uh, like accidentally, yeah. Uh, setting the depth of material too deep and cutting like a quarter inch deep into the MDF. 
sometimes uh, we accidentally drill through the table, have to take like a round dowel and uh, cut it off about the right length, um, put it in, glue it in place, let it uh, cure, and then uh, the next time we run a facing path, it'll just cut into it and keep the vacuum preserved, especially because we flip it over every couple of times because after a while, when you keep machining on one surface, it kind of kind of curls up like this. It doesn't want to have the edges stay down. So you want to flip it over and then machine the other side. Because when it's cupped like this onto the material, like, you know, this is your table, the material is like this, um, it sucks down relatively easy. But when it's the other way, it's hard to get the edges to hold down. You can use like uh, painter's tape or the like to hold it down. Sometimes you use um, double-sided adhesive tape, but uh, there are problems with all those options. So it's better to just have the, uh, um, the outer edges touch your um, the deck and have a center that goes up and then the vacuum will pull it down. Badger, 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 badger. It's a snake. Yeah, I was thinking for, um, uh, if I did PVC, I'd want to do like two pieces. One I would do is kind of like a uh, open chambered box where the um, uh, connection for the vacuum would go in. And the next layer would have like, you know, grooves for the gasket material and then um, a hole bored through the center so that the vacuum, you know, that's where the vacuum would come down and come up through the center, you know, act through the center and you could put gasket around the area you want to have it. You could make it as large or as small as you want with the uh, grooves there. The uh, big tables at work have the grooves like that and like an open chamber underneath uh, the surface with the grooves and they have holes like every couple of inches that uh, uh, let the vacuum come up or vacuum action. And uh, uh, if we uh, lift the spoil board off so that we can put like a template on an area, uh, we have to use like um, use uh, rubber seals that we or discs that have like a plunger on the bottom. We put them in the, those holes and when the vacuum comes on, they just seal up and don't let the uh, vacuum leak through that. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize I got my head in the... Uh, oh, you probably saw it on the shop stream. Yeah. Um, but yeah, normally I keep it relatively short, especially since I'm a constable. Um, one of the when they talk about um, escalation and de-escalation use of force like that the um, first level of force is your appearance and uh, so i have a fairly formal uniform that i use it's not really um, now it's kind of tactical but it's more like a dress uniform than a uh, uh, i'm out to do a raid uh, or serve a warrant type uniform because most of the stuff i do is i you know, talk to people at the front door. Um, so uh, having a formal appearance helps um, keep things from uh, getting too heated usually. Um, so, but yeah, having a uh, relatively formal uniform does, it is a force escalation, but it's at the very bottom of the scale. Um, so, but as a part of that, um, Having a clean uniform, clean appearance, uh, at least the way they teach us, uh, is um, a preventative measure uh, where if you deal with uh, somebody who looks at you, notices, and you know that you're having, uh, you know, you might have to do an arrest warrant for um, or get them to comply. If they look at you and they see somebody who is like, you know, not paying close attention to their appearance, uh, their uniform uh, doesn't look like it's been uh, uh, kept clean and you've got everything neat and organized on it. They think you might be a sloppy person, not paying attention to things and that they can uh, uh, get the jump on you when they want to. But if you 
are dressed like you're paying attention to minor details and making sure that everything's the way you want it. Uh, they tend to, uh, and this may not even be a conscious thing, but they tend to look at you as you're alert, you're paying attention. And if they try and uh, pull something over on you as far as like, you know, running away or attacking you, they're less likely to think it will succeed because you would be paying attention and catch them before they got too far along that. I don't know how valid that is, but uh, uh, I can see a logic to it. So I try and do that, though. In the scale of law enforcement officers, I'm kind of really at the bottom of the bottom of the the ladder there. Uh, as I have put it to some people, I'm barely law enforcement, um, and I tend to be very, very skeptical of a lot of uh, police actions, practices, and whatnot. Um, I am a firm believer in a don't talk to the police and stop self as another one who's. I haven't actually seen their uh, videos, but uh, it's fairly, uh, they're known for the phrase, stop self-snitching. I think Ian mentions him a lot. So, and I try and do my job in the most ethical manner I can. Um, I am an elected law enforcement officer, so I... Uh, do get paid by the courts, but I uh, essentially uh, serve at the will of my local electorate. So I try and be uh, worthy of the trust they've given to me to do my job in that regard. And if I ever wind up being asked to do something that I don't consider ethical, I am more than happy to resign rather than do it. This is not my primary source of income. And uh, we I figure it's helpful when we have uh, people that are doing law enforcement type duties who um, try and consider the ethics of uh, serving the people and not just I'm there to you know, get a certain number of arrests and find crimes to prosecute. So even if there may not be one there. And I am not above the law. So I will do my best to comply with it in the course of my duties, even if it doesn't make things easy for me. Sorry, I'm, I have very strong feelings, but not necessarily well articulated feelings about this. So Apologize if I'm rambling there. Yeah, um, I know constables is a more Commonwealth type uh, law enforcement name, uh, but uh, in the States, um, we're kind of like a uh, a lesser version of the sheriff. We can, um, at least in my area, the sheriff. Um, where I grew up in Idaho, our position is kind of uh, a little bit analogous to like the marshal position out there. But uh, serve at the will of the people. I can appoint deputies who serve at my will. I haven't done that though because I don't have the workload to justify uh, having a deputy. And uh, they have to go through the same training I did. When I went through, it was paid for by the uh, constable, um, constable tr education training fund or whatever. Um, I forget the name, the exact name of it right now. But uh, they originally set uh, like a $5 fee per docket that constables handle to go into that training fund so that uh, um, new constables can be trained up uh, when they're elected. Uh, but they haven't updated that fee for more like more than 30 years and they ran out of money a few years back. So they've been doing various things to uh, try and uh, still provide the service. One of which is, is new constables that have gotten elected now have to pay for their training. Uh, 
which is about for basic training and basic firearms is right around five thousand um, dollars the uh or four thousand dollars or something like that um but the uh thing is is that's for 120 hours of training and um municipal police officers in our area go through a different act process which gives is about 850 hours and they pay about the same amount for that level of training so I kind of think we're being overcharged based off of that. And it's a bit frustrating. Oh, um, sorry, let me uh, catch up on the chat. I apologize. Um, thank you. I figure the more I can share that type of stuff to people, the more people have... Uh, experience to know what to expect when they meet constables because a lot of people in this area don't really know what a constable is or what they do uh, thank you um i grew up in boise i, I was born in boise uh, when i was about 11 uh moved or no when i was about six moved to montana until i was about 11 moved back to boise um then uh Moved to, after I was an adult, moved to California for about three years, then moved back to Boise. And uh, then in late 2000, I moved out to Pennsylvania. Yeah, we're, uh, we're trying to, uh, the uh, state association I'm in is trying to uh, see if they can't do something about the, uh, the training fund or the fee bill because a lot of the fees we get for uh, what we do are you know set by statute and they haven't been updated in quite a while um for example const constables are um allowed to uh do court security at the magisterial district courts which is like the uh, small claims court area out here um but the rate is 13 dollars an hour and uh, in a lot of places that would be below minimum wage these days so for uh, doing uh, civil service i get about 20 bucks and that includes the mileage portion uh, for evictions i get about 127 bucks uh, and evictions are the most dangerous thing that constables do pretty much every constable who's been killed in like the last 40 years was they were doing an eviction um, so, and I don't think, uh, any other actions, uh, resulted in actual, um, yeah. looks like, uh, they, this broke and they retied it before they sold it. Oops, let me see if I can't get this more untangled. But yeah, I've been a constable for about eight years now, almost nine. Um, we have six year terms as constables, so. I'm gonna run probably at least one more time. I don't know about it after that. There are some benefits even if I don't um, do a lot of work as a constable. At least uh, once you are through basic and uh, um, basic training and basic firearms, uh, the annual recertification classes or continuing education are not that expensive. They're usually only like one or two hundred dollars. So um, uh, I don't, I don't, I won't feel bad about keeping those up, um, even if I'm not really doing a lot of work as a constable. I've definitely, uh, the, uh, um, the fees I bring into the court system, uh, for the work I do, uh, has definitely more than paid for my training. And I continue to do that. Yeah. 
Let's see, this one doesn't want to unroll easily. Yep, um, that is the least pleasant part of my job, uh, but I figure um, it's something that uh, you know needs to be done, and the uh, landlords go through the court system, so they're all heard uh, and educate, adjudicated before I step into it, and I try and handle that in a uh, common ethical manner. I don't try and aggravate the situation. I don't try and, you know, exert my authority as I uh, do the job. Um, to me, the uh, best type of evictions I get are the ones where the tenant is able to um, pay so that the uh, landlord uh, is happy that they stay there. Um, the um, Second best tie for me is if they decide that they will go ahead and move out prior to me showing up. Hopefully they have found a new place. Um, though I do have to say that a lot of the places I've done evictions uh, for the uh, residence is really seriously trashed and it's gonna take quite a bit of money to make livable again. And I can understand um, since how that is a problem for a lot of the landlords and most of the landlords I deal with are single unit landlords are not like businesses or things like that. They're just somebody who has an extra property and they're renting it out. So. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, well, the way they work is uh, if, you know, somebody's not paying rent or the uh, landlord thinks they're doing damage and wants them out or they've reached the end of the lease and they just don't want to leave, um, they file an action with the uh, magisterial district courts. Uh, even though they're the small claims type court here in Pennsylvania, they're the court that all landlord tenant actions have to start at. And... Uh, so I do the initial service, they have a hearing, and the uh, landlord and the tenant get to state their cases. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, uh, the landlord is not meeting their obligations and whatnot, at which point, you know, uh, they usually don't get an eviction order, and the landlord is required to like, you know, bring the property up to livable standards or something like that before they can go forward. And there are two types of evictions we do here. One is called a straight possession, which is where the landlord wants them out regardless. Most of the ones I deal with are what are called pay and stays, where um, the order for possession can be satisfied by the tenant uh, bringing their account back into active status and pay off what the uh, order is for. Um, and in most cases uh, where the person says that, you know, they they're trying to get the money together and expect to have it within a week or so. Most, I'd say 90% of the landlords I've dealt with will give the people another week or two to, you know, be able to do that. Uh, and that's actually happened probably about half the time the people ask for it, they're able to do that. So uh, anyway, so uh, it goes before the judge. Uh, they decide whether or not to issue the uh, order for possession. Uh, then I get that. I have to serve that. Um, and then depending on whether it's a residential or commercial uh, property, um, they have either uh, 10 or 15 days after the service that they have to uh, either settle the order or leave. And uh, then I show up there and uh, either I have to kick them out or they pay pay me or pay the landlord. If they pay me, I then transfer that over to the landlord, give everybody receipts so that uh, if they have to go to court again, they can show that they did indeed pay. Um, and while I am authorized by uh, the order and uh, statute that I can like break in and physically remove them, I haven't ever actually done that. If it looks like there's going to have to be something physical, I try and uh, Get a hold of the local police and see if we can't like mediate when they have an actual like police officer that they're dealing with as well 
but I try not to do that too often because that's not the police officer's job uh, to uh, help me do evictions. It's mostly like if there's something going on where it looks like me doing my job is going to result in some sort of violence, I try and have them on hand um, to help de-escalate uh, and or deal with it. Because while I can arrest people, I can't enter them into the, the system because I don't have an ORI number, uh, originating whatever identifier. Um, and I have only had to call the police to assist in an eviction, I think, three, three or four times in eight years. Uh, and in all but one of those, we didn't go forward with the eviction at that point. And we were able to get things resolved one way or the other. The one where it did go forward was essentially uh, the property was being sold and they couldn't stay. And um, they wound up needing to be uh, committed for evaluation because they were really not capable of caring for themselves at that point. <coughs> so that was the only time that uh, the police uh, had to actually actively intervene because I was not able to uh, do the uh, commitment, you know, evaluate for that commitment. And they were, they also brought out an ambulance to talk to him, evaluate him as well. So that was kind of sad. Actually, that was a lot sad, but uh, hopefully they were able to get the guy the, the help he needed. So, sorry, don't mean to ramble too much on that. I, It's kind of depressing, but I, uh, so let me catch up with the chat here. Okay, not quite that, but uh, I do try and, uh, oops, sorry, whoops, wrong one, there we go. Uh, I do try and not, uh, quote unquote, go hands on if I can absolutely avoid it. Well, essentially they can as far as like, if the lease is over and they want them out, um, they're able to essentially do the eviction uh, eventually, but they do have to go through all the process. So anyway, let's switch to a happier topic. Um, so I'm hoping uh, my upcoming vacation, I will be able to uh, do either some video interviews or some shorts of other people who do braids uh, because there's a fair number of people that are going to this event that do do Kumihimo as well. And I wanna get you know videos of some of their work with their permission and go ahead and post those so people can see the other, you know, other people's interpretation of doing this process here. It's also a chance to get to meet a lot of my friends that I only see once a year because they live in different parts of the country. And while it's relatively close for me, uh, it's like only a six hour drive for me, uh, for other, I, there are people who attend this event regularly from, uh, the West Coast and from Australia and from Europe. So the person who uh, was in charge of the event last year uh, lives in Australia. So yeah, all right, we're almost there. One left to go. And I got to see if I can figure out how to do the braid. <laughs> I'm also, uh, if I can get that vacuum table to work the way I want, and I'm going to be doing a lot more signs, likely. I'm also thinking that I can do 3D carves easier as well. But since I seem to have overcome my uh, mental inertia that was keeping me from doing um, work on the CNC router, 
hope to have a lot more work on that done relatively soon. I don't like this company's uh, the way they do their skeins. It does not like unwinding easily. DMC def definitely does a better job of uh, getting their skeins to the customer in a uh, easily usable format. Since we've got a lot of new people on here, uh, if you'd like, I can uh, bring up a picture of uh, one of my 3D carvings that I did. I think I've got a copy on this local machine. If not, I can get it there relatively easily. But I'll wait till after I get this one on here. Getting close here. go. Let's get this tied off and put in place and then we're actually theoretically ready to start. Though I should probably hmm the bag is about its full length. Should probably uh Get that set up a little differently so that uh, it'll hang a bit higher. There we go. Well, it went from uh, cool and somewhat humid to uh, muggy about five minutes ago. I'm tempted to go turn on the fan. Probably has something to do with all the lights I have on me to be able to show this. Okay. Give me a second here to finish this off and I'll go ahead and bring up uh, some of those pictures for you. And... keep that bundle from snarling on me. Also, for some reason, YouTube has been uh, thinking that I need to see the exact same uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs YouTube short over and over again, because just about every time I look on YouTube the last week, it's been like one of three or four different versions of that short. Well, I did like uh, that part of that movie there. I really don't need to see it three or four times every day. Alrighty. Give me a second here. And I will see if I can find those uh, pictures. have it there. Yep, that's the right picture. All right, let's see if I can't share this. Hey, whatever works as far as the mouse on the gene goes. All right, so window, there we go. Share. Let's see. I think I can embiggen that a bit. There we 
we go. I did that in walnut. It is about 10 inches wide and about 18 inches tall. And it's got a uh, coat of uh, clear polyurethane on it to kind of bring out the color. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, the lady who helps my wife and I run our quartermaster department at the event we go to, uh, this was my gift to her last year for thanking her to uh, working with us. She likes wolves, so. But yeah, I want to be able to do more stuff like that. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen you on before, uh, crazy, but welcome to the stream. And thank you. All right. If there's anything else that, uh, I don't think I have any more carving pictures on this laptop at the moment, but I'll try and load up a couple more uh, when I get a chance in the future to show. Check one other folder here real quick. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, I got a close up of the uh, um, braid pattern I did for um, uh, Emily D. Baker, but in a different color pattern. I took the picture with a uh, USB uh, microscope thing, but I think you folks will like it. So let me share that real quick before I get into trying to figure out how to do this braid. Share screen window. There we go. And share. Um, what happens is, is, um, somebody creates a 3d file, either from a picture or some, or they do the design work. And then I use what's called a tapered ball nose mill, where the tip of it is like sometimes only half a millimeter wide. It's got a, uh, like a full radius on the tip of it. And then going back to the, uh, to where the tool is in the collet, it goes up to like about an eighth inch or a quarter inch diameter. So you're able to get, um, uh, uh, and then what it does is you do a line across the uh, piece where the, the CNC router uh, raises and lowers the uh, uh, tool to do the 3D profile and just keeps going back and forth, kind of like a raster, uh, like uh, the lines on a TV. so. Well, thank you for catching it live and thank you for watching it on the replay. Appreciate everybody here. Thank you. All right, so let's see how talented I am. I'm going to go ahead and try and uh, um, get this uh, right done. So let me go grab the book. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll just sit there that long. Alrighty. So, 100. And just make sure I got the right one. 101. All right. So, first moves from there to there, and there to there. And, hmm, I'm not sure what three means. Let me uh, take a second, use my phone to do Google Translate, make sure that I'm understanding what I'm doing. I really do appreciate uh, that, makes it a lot easier to. figure this out without actually knowing the languages involved. 
go Google Translate camera. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so if I'm understanding right, um, okay, I what the uh, disambiguation of the uh, instructions, thanks to translate, the uh, this move here is telling me that I need to pull those tight like I did on the last braid so that the uh, there's tension on there and then down there and up there, up there and down there. All right, so we'll do moves one and two and three, then I'll double check four and five. I don't wanna break the spine, so I'll put a little bookmark in there. All right, so. This is move one, and this is move two. And pull it tight. And okay. So clockwise. Over and the remaining in the other direction. So the clockwise side of the pair goes like this. Okay, so that's that side, and then that is that side. Let me just confirm that that's what I was doing. Okay, so, yep. Okay, that looks right. And then, Okay, so out to out, next one to out, in, the, in between, and okay. Just making sure I'm getting what's going on here. Okay. Let me double check what that note is for 15. With Google Translate. Sorry if I'm not all that vocal right now. I'm trying to make sure I'm understanding what it is I'm going to be doing. Yes, the uh, weights are holding the double strands. Okay. Okay, so, all right, if I'm understanding this correctly, and I, I believe I start from the side facing, yep, okay, so these go to here, and these go to here, then The second set goes to here, and this comes down to here. Okay, so the third set 
goes there. And that returns to that spot. And this goes here and returns to there. And Then this goes here, and this goes here, and then I pull these snug, and we go on to the next page. Hmm. Nope, that's actually, that's the whole pattern. So this will be easier to pick up than I was afraid of. So then these go to here, these go to here. I snug them up and the clockwise side. Let's get these a little further out here, make it a little easier. The clockwise mouse side kind of flips over here. Whoops. Let me check on that. Okay. The clockwise mouse side flips over like this, so it kind of crosses over the side closest to it. And then same thing for here. And these get pulled. And then just confirm I go to the outside. Yes. So essentially, the matching color goes to the outside edge, with this being outside, this being the center. And these go back to where the other one was. So these purple go next to the purple and that purple that's there goes back to where the original, the lower one was. So these go next to the red and the red that was up here goes where the original red was. Do it again to here. Do it again to here. And to here and to here. And we don't move these, we just pull the center one snug. And then right to left, and left to right, pull these snug. Probably should have used the smaller D-ring, the way it's looking. I don't want to undo it, it's not a problem, but the D-ring is much larger than I need it to be. So this is actually not going to be very hard to pick up, and I expect this is going to go fairly quickly for a braid. So, all right, so, ta da, 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 da. The color coordination makes this extra easy. Let's get that untangled. Whoops, I forgot a step there. Let's put these back the way they were and do the step I forgot. Okay, so once they're on the side and I pull them snug, the clockwise most side Clockwise most side, flips over counterclockwise direction, and these go here. Zoom these out a little bit.
Now we go like this. And we go through until we get to the center matching pair, which don't get this crossover action. They just get pulled snug and even them up a little bit and right to left, left to right, pull it snug. And it says you're supposed to use the same force every time for pulling it snug. And then the clockwise most side goes over. That goes over this way. And let's get pulled. Or no, they don't get pulled then, they get pulled at the end. So I think it'll be okay for that. So there, 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 there. White, white, green, green, blue, blue. Now is when I would do the pulling, but I already did that. So right to left and left to right. Pull it snug and do a Quarter round and quarter round and black to black, white to white, green and green, blue and blue, purple and purple. We don't do the red, we just pull it tight. And right to left, left to right, pull it tight. And spread it out just a little bit so it makes it easier to do this move. Clockwise, most side of the pair goes counterclockwise a quarter way around. And mirror image to action. And white to white. Green to green, blue to blue, purple to purple, red to red, and pull this snug, and I've done a complete iteration of the pattern. So that's looking pretty good. Sorry, let me go ahead and catch up on the chat. Sorry, I was focusing on the braid. Okay, let me... I'm sorry I missed you. I uh, hope you have a good night. No, oh, thank you very much. It looks like it's going to be a fun braid to braid, so thank you very much. Did I get it? I think I, I think I corrected it when I was making the mistake. No, I haven't. Though I think I could probably do something. But I think most of the ones I'm thinking, you know, I would come up with would already, a lot of them would already exist. On the Takadai, I think it's more likely I would be able to come up with a um, right there. But I uh, have um, done my own color variations. Um, so kind of, I guess. Um, but uh, I mean, the um, the pickup braids are essentially where I do the designing myself and then the program or you can use a library of moves to figure out what moves you need to do to match your design. Um, so kind of, I guess. But I haven't come up with like particular set of moves to uh, come up with a uh, pattern on my, I mean, uh, a braid on my own. Most of the stuff I think I would try it would probably be a variation all right so it's a little hard to see this um 
Let me see if I can take a quick picture and uh, display it for you folks. Let's see what the braid looks like. Okay, camera's open. Oh, the lenses are open. Camera, let's see. There we go. The wonders of modern technology. So it's gonna, it's not gonna look exactly like the one that was uh, in the uh, um, uh, the book, um, the color pattern they had out there. And if I understand the way that one is done, it is essentially you had one set of colors basically this would all be one color this would all be a different color and uh um you would get like the alternating bars as it worked its way through i think i'll do a couple more renditions maybe like one or two iterations through and then i will go ahead and call the stream for tonight um and uh have to figure out what I'm going to do over this weekend, but I'm probably going to do try and do at least one or two streams. I might do another shop stream. That seemed to be very popular, so uh, though it might be me working on getting the uh, AC installed. We'll have to see how that goes. So right to left, left to right, pull snug. Let's move this center up a little bit, and. Make it easier to move them into the center and clockwise most side. I could actually do this as a 32 Tama pattern uh, and just extend it out. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I can also do relatively easy is I, if it if uh, I understand how it's doing, I, t I can scale up or scale down somewhat to make it a, a larger, smaller braid. So, green to green, blue to blue, purple to purple, red to red, and Black to black. Though I think I didn't pull them tight. So, or no, I did pull them tight and then cross them over. Okay. So, um, so then I pull these tight and we're ready for the next move. Right to left, left to right. Pull snug and quarter jump, quarter jump, and V to blue, purple to purple, red to red. Black to let it get untangled here. There we go. Black to black. White to white. Pull the center one snug. And right to left. Left to right. Pull snug. And Clockwise counter cross and mirror and purple to purple, red to red. Probably should shorten that one up. It's a bit long. Black to black, white to white, 
green to green. Pull the center snug. Yeah, I need to redo the weight bag. So I'll go ahead and stop here for the night. Yeah, um, clacking is very nice. Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to get out of focus here. Let me... And I should, now that I've got it ready, let me switch to... Eh. Okay. So that is a much better display. I'm sorry for uh, doing that. But yeah, I enjoy the clacking noises that Tama make. So thank you again, everybody who joined the stream. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll probably be doing some more uh, on this particular braid this weekend regardless, because I'd like to get a decent amount of it done so I can uh, take a uh, picture for the thumbnails. Does anybody else have anything they uh, wanted before I head out? I'll give a, about a minute or so for anybody to come up with that. If not, then I will go ahead and end then. And uh, while I'm waiting, let me re-roll this red so that it's not like moving wildly as I uh, try and uh, move the matching piece that has a much shorter. All right, there we go. Roll it up a couple of times. And the Lark's head not back on. And there we go. Now I can just roll it down to match the others. Oh, the... Uh, I will probably do one tomorrow night, uh, at least for a little bit. Um, I might do it a little bit earlier than normal, or earlier than these have been. I want to uh, make sure that I'm done before uh, Rob starts his Friday Night Frenzy. Uh, I know I can stream against it if I want to, but... I'm trying not to conflict, at least while I'm planning on working on his braid. Um, so my guess is it'll probably be 7 o'clock um, Eastern Time, about a half hour before this one started, because he starts his about 8, 8.30. Um, the music is uh, built into StreamYard. Um, let me bring it up real quick. I, you won't see it, but uh, bump up the volume just a little bit. That one's called Night Driving. The other ones that are built into it are, this is Acoustic Cinematic. Give us again. And then we have Dance Pop. And we have Daydreaming coming up here a second. I've done that one for uh, background music before. This is Feeding the Ducks. Then we've got Into Space. And Lo-Fi. And we also have, uh, we did the night driving already. That was one that's playing most of the screen. And we have rock. So those are the ones that are built into StreamYard. Uh, you can add music to it. Um, let's see. Uh, just taking a look at the settings for it right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would have to either buy a license for something or uh, use a service for that. So anyway, let me highlight that. So I think that was everything. So have a uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for joining the stream. Stay safe and happy braiding.